concept to the image of the Holy Spirit is taking shape throughout the world. Hopefully it's the recognizing of who she is, the gratitude for what she does. Now, as a result of findings in the Dead Sea Scriptures, the Coptic, Nagamati, in the extra-biblical texts of the Jewish mystics, scholars are recognizing the Holy Spirit as the female force for the outpouring of the higher teaching and spiritual rebirth. For over the years, the Holy Spirit has played various roles in our traditions, acting in creation, imparting wisdom, inspiring Old Testament prophets. In the New Testament, she is the presence of God in the world, in the power, in the birth, in the life of Jesus. The Holy Spirit became well established. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit became well established as a partner in the Trinity with the Father and the Son after the late 4th century AD. In the Old Testament, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the Holy Spirit was known as Ruah, or the Ruah HaKadosh. In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit was known as Numa. The Holy Spirit was not rendered as Holy Ghost until the appearance of 1611 Protestant King James. <laughs> until, yeah, the Holy Spirit, yeah, I, that just reminded me of something. When I was a kid, there was who we used to call the Holy Ghost. And then it was, they, they made a big difference. They made a big deal about changing it to the Holy Spirit. They like more ghost scared people. Evidently. But they have been there since 1611. Ah, well, but I, it just, I, I, it, that memory just flashed in front of me. You know, one of the Why times. Why were kids, they said, we're going to say ghost, you love us, you the principal, the Mother Superior, even made a point of stopping in and to see if kids had been told that yet. Yeah. The Holy Spirit was not rendered as Holy Ghost until the appearance of the 1611 Protestant King James Version of the Bible. For the most part, Ruach or Numa have been considered spiritual force or the presence of God. The power of this force is seen with the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a source for divine guidance and is our indwelling comforter. Likewise in Hebrew thought, Ruach HaKadosh was considered a voice sent from on high to speak to the prophets. He, as a reference to Spirit, has been used in theology to match the pronoun for God. Yet the Hebrew word, Ruach, is a noun of feminine gender, and the spirit is not called it, despite the fact that pneuma in Greek is a non-gender noun. Amongst the Eastern Church communities, there is none more clear about the feminine aspect of the Holy Spirit as from the Coptic Gnostics writings. On such document records that Jesus says, even so did my mother, the Holy Spirit, take me by one of my hairs and carry me away to the great mountain Tabor in Galilee. The Acts of Thomas gives a graphic account of the Apostle Thomas's travels to India and contains prayers invoking the Holy Spirit as the mother of all, as the mother of all creation, and compassionate mother, among other titles. The most profound Coptic writings definitely link the Spirit manifested by Christ to all believers as the Spirit of the Divine Mother. That's beautiful. New manuscripts, new manuscript discoveries of recent decades have shown that more early Christians have previously thought regarded the Holy Spirit as mother of Jesus. Now one text in the Gospel of Thomas, which is part of the newly discovered Nagamati text, most are composed about the same time as the biblical Gospels in the first and second centuries AD. In this Gospel, Jesus declares that his disciples must hate their earthly parents, but love the father and the mother as he does. For my mother gave me falsehood, but my true mother gave me life. In another Nagamati discovery, the secret book of James, Jesus refers to himself as the son of the Holy Spirit. Mass consciousness changes are happening in the human evolution right now. We are living at a time of profound and revelatory discoveries of archaeology and ancient spiritual texts that point the way to our future. Jesus himself was said to have female disciples as disclosed in Gnostic literature and recent archaeological findings of early Christian tombs in Italy. A beginning has been made to reclaim the spirit of the Ruha found in the mountain of newly discovered pre-Christian texts and Coptic Egyptian texts of the early church. Now, the new directions of spiritual and scientific studies are showing that it is now possible that the Holy Spirit is the feminine indwelling presence of God. 
We need to understand that before and during the Torah, there was an age of Yahweh. Then the True Testament begins telling us about the age of the Son. So the new age begins where gifts were poured forth through the Son, and this would be the age of the Holy Spirit. So let's finish with John 3, 8. And he wants you to notice the feminine description of the Spirit. For the wind blows where it wants to, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from, and you do not know where it's going. So it is that everyone who has been born